So here we're going to use this very nice diagram from Dexter Perkins' online neurology textbook to look at amphibole compositions. This is, I guess we can call it the amphibole quad. And then down here we have the structure of amphiboles, nicely illustrated in the textbook by Klein and Dutro, and also in that same textbook by Klein and Dutro, a table that summarizes amphibole compositions. So let us start with an amphibole composition. So how could we write that? Well, we could write it in terms of the kinds of cations that we would put into the structure just in very general terms. We'll start with a W cation and we can have either zero or one atom of those. And then we can have fellows that we refer to as the X cations. We'll take two of those per formula unit. We'll take five uh, fellows that are a Y cation eight of a Z, and then those cations will be charge balanced by 22 oxygens, and then two of either hydroxyl or fluorine. So we'll just write that like so. So the W cation, so this is the general formula for the composition, W and then X2Y5, Z8O22, and then OH and fluorine, two, oh, two, some combination of two of those. So the W cations, these are the fellows that would go into the A sites. They would be in 10 or 12 fold coordination. So where are the A sites? We come over here, there are these big sites here. So let's, let's first back up and take a look at the structure itself. Notice that we have a chain of tetrahedra here. So there's another tetrahedra there, 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 and there. And it's a double chain, so there's another chain here, here, and here. And they're linked by sharing oxygens there and there, and then out of, out of the field of view here. So there's our double chain. And in between these double chains are these very large A sites. So those A sites can be left unfilled if they are filled then we would have that W cation be a 1 instead of a 0. And the W cations that we would have, it looks like sodium is the major player there. We'll make a little bit of potassium could probably go into the A site as well under certain circumstances. So how about the X? The X cations are fellows that go into the M4 sites. The M4 sites are over here. So M stands for metal, and the metal cations that we put there I are going to be in either six-fold or eight-fold coordination. If we take a look at the M4 site in this table, uh, we can see we could put magnesium or iron. Those would most likely go into uh, the octahedral coordination, the six-fold case. And then calcium would be in the cubic or distorted cube in the eight-fold case. Uh, so for the M4, uh, depending on how these chains are twisted and turned and, and sharing oxygens with these other metal sites, it could be uh, that they're bonded to six or eight oxygens. So how about the Y sites? We're going to take five of these guys, and these are going to be the fellows in the M1 to M3 sites. So M1, M2, M3, those are here. You can see a wide variety of cations are going to go there. And all of these fellows are going to be in six-fold coordination. Notice that that six-fold coordinated site will also include things like titanium or uh, three-plus iron or aluminum. And then in the Z, uh, uh, for the Z cations, these are the tetrahedral sites. There are two of them. There's a T1 and a T2. They have slightly different bonding geometries, but they are all... Uh, in four coordination, hence we use T for tetrahedral, and then that is going to be uh, almost completely uh, cont uh, containing silicon and aluminum, four plus. Uh, over here we have the hydroxyl or fluorine. It's out of the field of view, but in the legend uh, is indicating that that dashed circle would be the site of hydroxyl or a fluorine. <clears throat> and you can see the M1s and M2s and M3s are all clustered over here. Those would be the Y cations. So now uh, this table nicely lists out the possibilities in the name. Let's take a look at this quadrilateral diagram here. If we leave the W or the A site empty and have no W cations, then we would have all of the charge balance for the oxygen and hydroxyls being taken care of in the X and Y site. And so here you see it says M7, well, this is a case for anthophyllite, 
where the X and Y are both filled by magnesium. And for grunerite, I've written over it a little bit, but you can still see there is an iron with a subscript 7. That would be the case where we fill all of the X and all of the Y with only iron. But there is solid solution between these two, so we get, uh, instead of just pure grunerite, we can have the Cunningtonite grunerite series, where we mix in some magnesium, and then the anthophyllite series, where we substitute a little bit of magnesium. But the bottom line is everything down here at the bottom end of this diagram contains uh, nothing in the A site, so all, there are no W cations, and we have seven atoms in the X and Y sites that are all magnesium and iron. Then we have a miscibility gap, and then we have tremolite to ferroactinolite, and then regular actinolite in between as a solid solution uh, fellow. And this is the case where uh, among these seven cations, for the X cation, we will put in calcium. So notice that there is a 2 there. So the CA with a subscript 2 means that that X uh, cation is consisting entirely of calcium. True for tremolite, also true for actinolite. The real variation up here is what we're doing with the Y site. So we have MG with a subscript 5 and FE with a subscript 5. But we don't have to have just iron or just magnesium on the Y site. We can have extensive solid solution between magnesium and iron, and that's how we get uh, our actinolite series. So this is where we get these names, anthophyllite, th cummingtonite, grunerite, ferroactinolite, etc. Where we get into these more complex fellows, hornblende, glockfane, rubicite, that's where we start mixing in other things besides just calcium and iron. So this is a very uh, convenient way to illustrate the amphiboles, but it's also very, very uh, simplistic compared to what we would find in a lot of igneous rocks where hornblende is very common. What's going on there is we're adding titanium into the Y site. We've got titanium here. Uh, ferric iron, aluminum are also going into the Y site. If we're adding an additional charge, uh, if we're putting in a 3 plus cation like aluminum or iron or titanium, uh, uh, into the uh, Y site. We're going to charge balance that by putting in a lower charge cation of sodium, let's say, into the M4 site. And then we can get things, the kinds of amphiboles that we would find in blue schists, glockfane, rubicite, or fedsonite, holmquisite, uh, by doing the same kind of substitution, by put, but by putting even more sodium into the M4 site, pulling out this calcium and filling up the M4 and maybe even putting some sodium into the A site. So these over here are very sodium-rich kinds of pyroxenes. So we have a wide variety of fellows. I, let me correct one thing. I think I mistakenly said that titanium was 3+. plus. Most of the titanium here is going to be in the 4-plus state. It would actually be pretty rare to have titanium reduced to a 3-plus state. So it's titanium-4 that would occasionally go into that Y-plus site and that excess charge would cause some sodium to go into the M4 site. In any case, a very nice summary here in Klein and Dutro to show the kinds of compositions that we can get. Uh, these are the quad components here that are illustrated in this diagram by Dexter Perkins. And then these non-quad non components uh, are also very important. They're not going to be able uh, they're not going to be illustrated in here. They're non-quad because they don't plot within this quadrilateral, uh, but they're very important for understanding igneous and metamorphic systems.